Well, hello everybody. Today we've got a 1996 Honda Accord. It's currently it's 2019. Uh, I think it's February. Is it Valentine's Day? February 13th, 14th, uh, 2019. So it's actually about 23 years old now. This car it's got about 200, just under 255,000 miles. And what I wanted to show you today is how I have the Bluetooth down here uh, through the ODB connection. ODB2, and then I've got um, the Torque Light um, software on my on my uh, cell phone that I don't use anymore. So I want to show you how it works, and then I want to show you some of the things that, that it got that it has here. So I'm going to turn it on, and now hopefully all this will work. And uh, let's see here. I don't see any lights going on there. I have to putz with it every now and then. So I just uh, turn that on, and let's see what we got. It's, it's checking the proto. It's waiting for the ODB connection. It says, and uh, let's see here. Okay, so I'm seeing some green lights down here on the ODB connection. This I actually got from from eBay, and you can see that as we go on here, um, it's starting to to get more and more um, on, on <clears throat> information on the very first screen that I've brought up there, which is basically to show everything that's going on, so as it gets more and more information, it does that. And right now, today, it's about 16, um, uh, minus 16 degrees Celsius, but I think is, th is it 3 degrees Celsius or minus 3? It's 3.2 degrees Celsius right now. Um, so, um, <clears throat> so you can tell this is an Android, um, so look what it says, you know, at this temperature, just as we've started, it says open loop due to in, in, insufficient temperature. Now what I wanted to show you, oh geez, I started, this may be too late already. So it's minus 15 degrees Celsius outside, but look at the coolant temperature. I should have done this right away. Um, it starts to go up really quickly. And, you know, the coolant temperature, and as I've driven, it actually goes up to uh, close to, you know, in this weather, about um, minus, uh, or sorry, about uh, 70, 75 to 85, 89 degrees Celsius, you know, as far as the coolant temperature goes. So I guess it's just under boiling point that um, the, um, that the, the thermostat actually works there. So we'll just watch this here as it goes up. I wanted to show you how it is in the morning. Now, what happens... <coughs> Uh, you know, what happened the other week, it was actually closer to minus 30 um, uh, Celsius, which is about minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. It was really, really, really cold. So when we started the car, it was, you know, I don't have a block heater on this, which heats up, you know, the, the antifreeze and then by, you know, indirectly then heats up the oil. So when we started it, it had some really strange sounds starting the engine when it was really, really cold and going, vroom, 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 vroom. And you, you actually had to, you couldn't drive away at that point. You had to leave it warm up for for a little bit. But what's really interesting <coughs> with this <coughs> is to see the actual instrumentation that goes on <coughs> as we do this. So we can see a whole bunch of stuff. And as this is warming up, I'm going to show you some of the other the other ones here. So this is, you can see here, we've got, you know, the vacuum, we've got the timing advance. And you can tell it's uh, currently we're about, uh, it doesn't, I don't have the RPM on here right now, but looking on my dashboard, it's about uh, 1500 RPM right now. And you'll notice that as as we go um, faster on the on the engine, the timing is going to start advancing a little bit more. So it's so interesting to see all these, um, you know, all the instrumentation as we go here. Right. So we've got again, we've got you know, we've got actual numbers. We can have a we can have a dial like this. We can have a graph, um, and so we have a, a line graph on there, and so we can see. Um, <coughs> so many things coming from all the many, many sensors that we have here. Uh, we're not going any anywhere here. For me to, you know, this is a, a standard transmission, so for me to hold the, the camera and drive standard and manipulate the steering wheel is a little bit much for me right now. So I'm just going to show you this in the parking lot. And, you know, we can, you know, eventually what I want to do is I'll actually have somebody hold the camera as I drive, and it's very interesting to watch the miles per gallon. I got the instantaneous miles per gallon on the top, and then sort of the longer term average on the bottom. And it's a calculated miles per gallon, but I'll tell you more about that when I do another video. So again, it's still, um, we still have a closed loop due to insufficient temperature. 
And um, I guess there's no secondary air status sensor on this particular car, if you look at it. And we can see more stuff as we go on here. Um, you know, it's interesting the acceleration um, keeps making this very quick calculation on there. Um, <clears throat> but what's really interesting is, is what I'd li really like to, to see, and hopefully I'll get this when, when I'm driving, is that the intake temperature is really, really low, but the coolant temperature starts to get higher. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that, you know, uh, living in Winnipeg here, we've always noticed is that the gas mileage is always a lot worse in the wintertime than it is in the summer. And so I started thinking, and, you know, I said, well, what if we could preheat the air intake, and what if we could preheat the fuel uh, with, you know, uh, the temperature off of the coolant, you know, would that change the gas mileage and by how much? And so what I want to do here is just to show a little bit of instrumentation with the car before I try anything. I haven't made any modifications to the car here at all. Um, I mean, I like the idea of, of, of trying something. It's a relatively old car. Um, if, you know, everything messed up, I mean, it's not so valuable that I'd be really upset about it. So, so anyway, um, let's just watch this go up um, a little bit more. But again, notice the difference. And it's minus 8 degrees Celsius right now, I think. Um, you know, the other, even when I, when I was driving the other day, um, it was, it was actually that low as, as we were driving, of course, as we went faster, the temperature actually went lower as you know, when you sit in the parking lot, the heat of the engine, there's not a lot of air circulating inside there, relatively speaking. And, um, <clears throat> and actually, you know, the, the heat of the engine, uh, actually warms up the, the intake temperature. So they will probably see this go up. <clears throat> In temperature and we're seeing this a little bit just went from minus 8 to minus 6 as the coolant temperature goes up so <clears throat> barrels of fun and you can spend all day long looking at all these um, I'm gonna go the other way yeah we can see some other things vacuum throttle and all these I pre-did you know put on there I mean you can choose which ones you want there's a whole bunch of um, um, <clears throat> There's a whole there's a whole bunch of things you can look at, and some of them on this particular car they don't have the sensors for it. So what's really nice about this particular software is that it's free, right? So you know you don't have to pay for it. I did have to buy the ODB connector, and this particular one I got off of eBay. It's actually made out of China for fifteen dollars. There's other there's a few others I bought too. I might give a review of those sometime. Um, So, let's see if we can get that RPM to go down a bit there. Okay, there we're, we're down just less than a thousand RPM now. So I should have put that one on there. But since I can see it on the dash, I don't think of that much pretty often. And this is I've used as, and uh, when, when I've been driving, and um, you can see there. So again, it's still in sufficient temperature. When it gets really warm, eventually, uh, that particular message changed. Okay, there we have um, the RPM there. If you look in approximately in the middle, just above the speed, it says revs, which is uh, 923 RPM. So it's got a nice little summary of everything there. So now the intake is minus 3 Celsius, we can see. And there we go. So as the coolant temperature is going higher, um, the intake's slightly getting going higher as well. So it was minus 8 before, now it's minus 3. And you know, we might get this above zero soon enough. But we're just idling here, and so you can see just how much uh, temperature actually goes into <clears throat> minus two, um, you know, comes off of the engine. So I really like that idea. I mean, can we, could we increase, if we could increase the temperature of the fuel, and could we increase the temperature of the air intake? you know, would we have a better miles per gallon? And intuitively, I'm going to say yes, because of our, my experience, you know, driving in cold weather and having really, really bad uh, gas mileage in the wintertime. <clears throat> and, uh, um, you know, I used to have an old Ford um, LTD2 with a 3.8 liter engine. And in the summertime, it would get a, I seem to remember it would get about 15 miles per gallon. But in the wintertime, it was, it was closer to 9 or 10. And it was a real pig on the gas. 
and you know we've always noticed that and and this was a carbureted car but the interesting thing it actually had a snorkel which brought hot air off of the exhaust and brought that into the air cleaner and it actually had a valve and that would you know adjust the temperature and I remember I went down to the junkyard and I, I actually got another air cleaner and I actually jimmied the the valve so that it always took hot air and I drove that through the summer not a problem never had a problem with um, you know a lot of things they want to keep the temperature at a certain temperature range and maybe there's engineering that went into that um, and did that I've never seen it um, <clears throat> but um, you know my experience was was that the car performed you know really well um, during the summer as well and um, you know, I spent a lot of time on that car to make sure that, that it would um, <clears throat> perform well but so these are different things and so like I say this is the idea I want to get some instrumentation you know on on the car before I do any changes there and and, and um, I got to look into the software to see if it does some logging that would be interesting to see if I could grab a log of all the stuff that's going on instantaneously and then put it into um, a spreadsheet and, and then maybe you can do some graphing of course this software by itself will graph um, each particular one um, <clears throat> so so I was right we did get above um, you know freezing point here when I went three degrees Celsius so <clears throat> So it's really fascinating to look at all this stuff as it goes on in your engine and, and see what's going on with all those sensors. Um, and this is a 96, so this I think this is the first year that the ODB connections came out. And so you can imagine what they're having now with all the extra, the other, more sensors and, and more computers going on with the car. And um, yeah, they're probably even a lot more. I mean, some of the features on, on this particular um, software you know we can't um, you know we we can't use because we don't have the sensors in this car so what else does it say let's check that first page there there we go now it says closed loop using O2 sensor for fuel mix so you now it's changed and so so somehow the they're doing something with the um, <clears throat> with the sensors there and the temperature. So before we had a different uh, message and now uh, now it's actually using the, the O2 sensor now that the temperature is, you know, high enough. So that I'd noticed as, a, as I've driven here. What else have we got here? So the timing advance is 15 degrees. Let's push up the RPM a bit there. 25 degrees, 32 degrees, 33 degrees, 34 degrees. It's pretty warmed up now. Now we're less than 800 RPM, as we can see on that. Uh, just to start right down there in the middle. That's what is our coolant doing again. Do as you're told, please. I really dislike disobedient software. Or software with bad interfaces, which cause me to make mistakes. It needs to be simple. To have a really good, you know, really good interface. It's one thing I don't like about cell phones is that the interface is so tiny that it's really hard to work with compared to a bigger keyboard. And uh, a lot of stuff. When I was a lot younger, um, I had a watch that had a built-in calculator, um, but the um, um, you couldn't use it on your hand. You actually had to use a pen with a with a fine point. Uh, on the, um, with, with, you had to use a pen with a really fine point in order to use this calculator, so it's a really poor interface. I really didn't like it much at all. So anyway, as you can see, the intake temperature is going up, the coolant temperature is going up, but the coolant temperature has gone up a lot more than the intake temperature. So. So. So that's what I wanted to show you. There we're up to in, you know 10 degrees Celsius. But I can tell you if if we went driving here and we were going, especially if we went on the highway and it was it was really cold, that that intake temperature wouldn't be 10 degrees Celsius. It would actually be 
cooler, it would be closer to, I think, between 0 and 5 degrees um, Celsius. So, so the speed is going to make, you know, get yourself colder air. And I know there's a lot of talk about, oh, well, the colder air is denser, so uh, it's got to be, you get more gas and you get more power. And, and that, you know, may be true. And yet I've seen some things on YouTube where people, you know, they did a before and after on their conversion and they, they actually ran the power and they had exactly the same power. So, you know, maybe it is for power, but, you know, my, my goal would be to increase the miles per gallon. And um, so, you know, we'll do some experiments. We'll see some instrumentation um, if I do manage to modify this. One thing about this car, it's really, really, really tight in the engine compartment. So I've been looking for places to put a heat exchanger in there. And it's really, really, really difficult to, to find any extra space. And I've been, you know, there's a few things. I'm, I might do another video there um, if I do, um, <coughs> um, you know, if I do do something, um, of course, I'll show all the explanations on there. But it's very, very tight in there. There's really no extra space whatsoever. And, you know, it's got a really odd, to me, what is a really odd cooling system. Every other car I've had in the past, the thermostat um, comes off of the top of the engine, uh, goes into the top top hose, which then, you know, the fluid then goes through, drops through the radiator with gravity and then returns into the engine off the lower tube. But in this particular case, the thermostat's not on the top hose, it's actually on the lower hose. So the intake, um, or sort of the, um, <clears throat> the thermostat will, will, will open on the return. And then that, that, you know, obviously with the sealed system, then, then, then the, um, the, the hot coolant would then go over through the radiator and then come back. So it's, it's really different. And I'm just like, really? So I don't know why they did that. Um, I suppose they got their reasons. Um, so, uh, and so given that, you know, the question becomes, well, you know, can you really rely on, on, on the top there? I mean, how, how, how often does the thermostat open? Um, and, you know, could we get much hot air or would it be inter more intermittent, um, you know, and so on. So <clears throat> I don't really have any sensor here, I don't think, for cool and flow, which would be nice to see for this particular experiment. So anyway, so a lot of things I've been thinking of. I mean, I mean, you know, how do you do this? Um, how do we actually make it work? And, uh, um, you know, is there space for it? You know, can, you know, any heat exchangers handle the, the pressures? Um, you know, you don't want, you know, if you're heating up fuel, you don't want that to suddenly uh, burst open. Um, so all these things I've been thinking of to make sure that, A, does it work? And, uh, you know, is it going to be safe? So a lot of stuff. But I wanted to show show this um, just to show the difference in the, the coolant temperature and the air intake temperature. And... Um, you know, just the software itself. So you can get that. It's it's Torque Light. You can download that. And obviously, I'm using Android here. I think if I haven't mentioned that. Um, and uh, so, but I think the I think when you buy the ODB connector, and again, you can see right now, you can see those. Um, you can see the lights going back and forth to indicate that it's working. Um, you have to buy them specifically for either the iPhone or the Android. So. Um, <coughs> just something to keep in mind when you do that um, and um, maybe I'll do a review of a few of them that I bought um, so so there we go and maybe one day I'll have um, somebody hold the camera here and, and I can drive and you can s I want to show the instantaneous and the average miles per gallon as we go um, and so, so there so again it's about minus 16 degrees Celsius right now it's about um, three degrees Fahrenheit uh, for those of you who think in Fahrenheit and uh, again, you can see the coolant temperature is going up, and um, very slowly the air, the intake temperature is going up. Uh, so, but vive la différence. Um, imagine if we. Um, so my idea is, what if we could get the intake temperature closer to, um, <coughs> closer to, um, you know, to to boiling point. I mean, could we get you know better gas mileage? So there you have it, um, and um, yeah, I hope it's useful.